Hi guys, Patty from Patty's Crafty Spot. So I am about to show you a bunch of videos um, on a tutorial on how to make this book, and I have bugs jumping on it. Um, so this is the version of this, and I'm going to be using the Graphic 45 Imagine. So I'll be showing you that, I think, in the next video. But anyway, I just finished completing this, and I just want to walk you through it super quick. So you can check out the link below on the completed version of this. And as soon as I get this decorated, I'll go ahead and put up a completed video on that as well. Um, I walk you through making this one right here. You will notice in part five, when I'm working on this page, my computer was heating up. So I, it did get a little choppy, but you can still see everything just fine. So this, I'll walk you through it all, but super quick. I don't want to go too long because my computer is still hot. So right here, here, and a, whoops pocket and then they all close up. I walk you through making that cute little page and whoops, the little waterfall page right here we do that one and then this super easy little page right here that one and then of course the back cover with this cute little page with a pocket Anyway, um, I hope you like my tutorial. I would love any feedback that you would give me. Um, if you see anything that might help improve the video, if you thought it was good, um, any kind of feedback, let me know. If you do make this, I would love it if you could tag me in it. Um, I'm all over social media, so just hashtag me at Patty's Crafty Spot or the at symbol at Patty's Crafty Spot um, so I can see what you made. And anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoy the video that you're about to watch on my tutorial. And if you like what you see, I'd love a thumbs up and also if you would subscribe. All right, so have fun making this and I will see you when I actually complete this. All righty, have fun guys. Okay, just real quick guys, I forgot to mention what I'm going to do in the YouTube video in the description box. I'm going to timestamp the different portions of constructing this. So either you can pause it or if you complete a certain spot and you don't want to watch all the way through, you can just go look for the timestamps in the description box and that may make it a little easier or, you know, just like if you want for a future reference, if you just want to only do this part, you don't have to search the video. Um, if you're going to do like your own thing, you don't have to go searching through the video for just the specific elements. All right. So just watch for that in the box. I'm going to go ahead and timestamp the different sections so you can just go ahead and skip to them. All righty. All right. Have fun, guys. Alright guys, so let's get started on making the fairy dust folio. So for this one, I'm actually going to use the Imagine by Graphic 45. And then I'm pairing it up with this cardstock. So it's Summer Days from Michaels. And you're not going to be able to see it. But the SKU number on this is 541733. And that's the paper I'm going to be using. So I thought that the shades of blue in this matched a lot of the Graphic 45 Imagine collection. So I figured that's what I'm going to use. So if you can see, let's see, now that it's not in the plastic. So, oops, I guess I didn't open this yet. So I figured, yeah, you can see like, I don't know how well the camera is picking up, but right above these spots here is some blue. So let's see if I can zoom in. Oops. Stop doing that. Um, let's see. Oops. So you can see the blues on that. So I think that color yeah, it's going to be super pretty. Gorgeous. All right, so let's get started on the folio. And what you are going to need is your chipboard pieces. So you are going to need two of them at seven by eight. And let's see. Do it this way. So you need two pieces, seven by eight. You're going to need one piece, six and a half by eight. And I will put all these measurements 
down below in the description box. And then you're going to need two pieces at one by eight. So you're gonna need those. And the order in which you are going to lay these out is, um, let me zoom back out again now. Oh, stop. Caitlin does that. All right. Okay, so the order that these are going to be laid out is going to be like this. Just like that. Okay, so this is going to be your front cover, middle, and back. And so basically, it is like this. Okay, so those are how your chipboard pieces are going to go. And I might be referring back to that book because when I made that book, I didn't have a plan. I just put it together. So I think I remember most of it anyway. So let's get started. So you're also going to need two pieces of Tyvek, four by eight. Now the way I like to figure the Tyvek for my binding systems, whatever the size of my um, spine pieces, I add three inches to it because I like to have an inch and a half on each side of here. So this is one inch. So adding three makes it four inches and then you can put it in the middle. So let's get started with that piece. So I want to score it. So I'm going to score it at inch and a half on each side. So then you have the one inch, there you can see it better that way, the one inch right in the middle there. Let's see, maybe I can do it this way. Let's try. So there, you can see that. So that's what I like to do for that. And now we are going to add tape to our spine pieces. So I'm using score tape, and this one is, I think it's 5 eighths on this one. So full tape coverage, and this is why I had to wait for my order of score tape to come in, because I was getting low. And I'm also going to use quarter inch, because I don't have half inch, I mean uh, one inch. And I'm ripping my tape. This is just the um, Perfect Trim ruler. And I'm just using it basically to rip my, my uh, score tape. It's kind of become my tool for that. I don't really use it anymore for the purpose it was intended because I have a different corner tool that I use that I like. So, once we have those taped on, doesn't matter either side, it's all going to be covered anyway. So now what you want to do is take the tape off, and now that you've scored it, you can find the metal. So that's right, smack dab in the middle. And I'm just going to use my bone folder to press it down. I'm going to do the same with the other piece. And it doesn't want to come off. Okay. And line that up too. Doing the score lines also helps keep everything nice and even. So now what I want to do is I want a quarter inch spacing. So I'm going to use quarter inch score tape for my spacer tape. And then this will come off when you go to put the rest of it together. I 
could have pre-done this, but this way you guys can see the process. And this is really a simple book to put together. So if you do follow my tutorial and do it, I would love any feedback on it, whether things to improve on or if you liked it. So I know I'm doing a good job would be awesome. So now I'm going to, so now I have my spacer tape there. And now I'm going to put tape on both sides of these here. And this was a fun little folio to create and make so many blank albums and sell them that I like a, I like it when I have a chance to play with pretty paper and I've been wanting to do something with that fairy dust I wasn't able to get the full-size paper pads I'm sure I can still find them but I just had the 8x8 and I thought that that would be cute to go ahead and make a little folio so now let's get some tape on these pieces. And I am out of tape on that one. Get some more tape. And if you do need score tape, I do sell it in my store if you would like to check that out, pattyscraftyspot.com. the right way before I tape them up. Alright, so I'm going to start with those two. So first things first is I want to put no, one of these on each side of the first one inch spine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have this nice cut mat here, so I always like to line everything up on my, my lines here. So just so you know, I'm not actually like guessing, I'm actually using the lines to my advantage. So I usually put it right up against the spacer tape, and then I'll just put like, I'm putting this bottom corner here down. So I'm making sure I'm lining up, oops, so I'm making sure it's lining up there, and then I can just go ahead and put that down and then just burnish it in. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And again, doing the same thing, lining it all up. And you might hear the traffic going by. I have the door open. I have the AC on, but I was afraid it was going to be too noisy, so I took and uh, just left the door open. So now I'm going to add tape on this side. And I'm going to go ahead now and line up this side with this, just like that. So we're going to do this. And this one I'm more eyeballing just because I have so much over here. So making sure that's lining up even. And now I'm going to do the same. Now this is the last piece, the six and a half by eight. So I always try to like just fit it in first just to make sure we're all lined up. So I'll go ahead. And 
sure you get that down. And now this one, I can see that my Tyvek is a little longer on that end. So I'm going to eyeball more the chipboard to make sure it's even. And then lining it up to the uh, my mat. All right. So there we go. So this is how the book's going to fold, just like that. All right. So now the next step is actually I'm going to trim my Tyvex hanging over a little, so just want to get rid of that. I don't like any extra bulk right there. So now the next step is I am going to cover the entire back side with tape. So let's go ahead and do that. I did get this. I do have the six inch tape, although I don't have very much left. It just seems sometimes it's harder to control it. So I like the two, two and a half inch tape. It just makes it easier to do this. And I'm going to do the other side so I know I'm even. And then if I have to piece together smaller pieces, I can do that. And I'm almost out of this one. And I am out. So it's a little bit in there. All right, and then I'm going to finish up with this because the other tape I have, I believe I got two and a half inches. And this is only two inches, so I don't want to trim it. So we just do this. And I'm putting full tape coverage on. That way my cover doesn't lift or anything. So. All right, and then just make sure you burnish it all down. Okay, so now we want our paper. So I'm going to need one, two, three pieces. I'm using eight and a half by 11, so I'm going to need three pieces. So on this, what I like to do when I'm piecing together paper I'll show you. So I'm going to take one piece and I'm going to take both sides. I'm going all the way to the edge. I'm not leaving any space. Now I'm going to attach my two pieces. So what I like to do is start all the way in the bottom corner here and make sure that I'm lining up this, this straight cut edge here to the straight cut edge there. And then I just pinch down the bottom here to hold it. And then all I do is walk it up, lining it up to the edge of the score tape. Just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, perfect. All right, so now let me show you what I like to do. So when you piece the pieces together, you can see the seams. So the outside, the part that is um, the back part of the book, such as like this part of the paper, I like to have um, the layers on the outside. 
So this piece is this piece here is on top of this piece as well as it is on top of this piece here. And I like to have everything lined up nice. So the way I do that is I want to find my center point between these two pieces here. So for this, it's going to have happen to be three and seven eighths centered because of the tape I had used. So I'm going to find my center point and do the same thing with the other side because I want to make sure I'm center top to bottom in the center spots. Just like that. And I can draw like a thin pencil line only because I don't want to go too dark. I don't want to actually indent it. So I'm just going to draw a thin little line. So let's see. So you can see my pencil line right here. And because this is eight and a half or eight, um, eight inch paper, my paper is 11 and a half. I'm going to, let's see. So first things first is I can want one inch up from the bottom. Did I do? Hold on, I think I did four sheets. One, one, two, three, four. I did do four. Okay. I thought it seemed a little short. All right, rewind. Let me get rid of this pencil mark. Okay, so again, I'm just going to just do the same thing I did, and I'm going to put tape oops, All right, it'll be on the inside. So I'm going to put tape on, so I'm going to put tape on this side. Again, it's all still following. The same. There we go. All right. Now let's find our center. So in here, because I have, this is how I'm going to find this one. So on here, this would be my center. So put in a little crease. So this is where the, between the two middle pieces are. So I can again, just go ahead and find my center, so let's see. All right, so my pencil line is there. That is my center right there. So now what I want to do is I want to draw a one inch line up from the bottom. And I'm going to go all the way across. Just like that. <clears throat> all right. So then what I'm going to do is the center of my book. So this is a seven and a half. So I'm going to find this center, which will be three and a half on my ruler. It's a little more there. And then right there, and now I'm just going to draw a line to 
just like that. All right, so now what I like to do is because I drew my center line here and here, so I'm going to line the bottom of the book up with the one inch line here, as well as I'm centering it from here to here on the book that I lined that up. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a helicopter flying over. All right, so now that I'm lined up, what I like to do is mark my edges. Just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and stick it all down. It always seems like such a waste of tape when you're pulling off these long strips, but it really does need it. Alrighty, so now we're going to stick it down. So the way I do is I start, just like when I put my paper down, I'll start down in this corner here and I'll line it up to the corner of my lines I drew. And I'm also going to make sure before I stick it that my center line is also there and it looks like it's lining up. And then just go ahead and drop it down. So by doing that too, um, I don't know why you can see it, but you can kind of see these lines here. So when the book's all closed up, everything is going to be the same. So from your edge of your book to this line is going to be the same distance as the edge of your book to this line. It just makes it look prettier, even though most of it's covered. I just kind of like it that way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to trim it up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut off one inch, leaving one inch from the edge of my chipboard to my cardstock. So I'm going to cut that off. Flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. And then I'm also going to cut across the top one inch. In case you're wondering, this is a um, it's a, a no slip ruler, and it is from Creative Grids. And this one happens to be 12 by six and a half, and it's got the little things on the back to try to help it from sliding. I love this ruler. So now what we want to do is we want to wrap our edges. So I'm going to use my five eighths tape. And I'm also going to use my quarter inch tape. Almost done. This it's taken a little longer than I would have liked. 
But if you know how to do this, you can just skip ahead. I'm going to try to put timestamps in my description. So if this part here is something you're already familiar with, I'm going to put some timestamps. So you can just bypass everything. But if you're looking for some different pointers, maybe you already do this and you're just looking for a different way to make something. Maybe I'm able to show you something that you're not familiar with. So that would be, sorry, that would be kind of cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to miter my corner. So what I'm using is the Colorways Art um, corner miter tool. So the tool itself is just this little V here. And it doesn't cover the whole part. Like if you were to see, if you put it this way, it doesn't cover all the way. So I actually just added a six inch metal ruler I bought at Michael's and I just score taped it down. So to me, it works perfect like that because then I can get full coverage from one end to the other. So I'm just gonna chop off my corners. And then also um, the colorways tool. Oops, it's really thick. So it's probably like two thicknesses of chipboard. So there's a lot of space underneath my ruler here. So it's kind of nice because it just sits, it just hugs it. So now you're gonna wrap it. So what I like to do first is I like to kind of bend it like this, just to kind of get it bent over. Ow. And be careful you don't give yourself paper cut. Because the paper is sharp. All right. And then on the side pieces, to just freeze that up. All right. So right here now, what you can do is you can Pull these quarter inch pieces out. If you forget, it's usually easy to kind of pull them out after the fact too. Except for when you put on the bottom paper, then you forget it. So. So I go ahead and press that down. All right, and then the other side. So I always do the long sides first, and then I fold over the short sides or the sides themselves second. <laughs> just make sure you get everything pressed down nice and neat. So now for the edges over here, take off my tape. And then I'm just going to fold down this piece here and then the other end. And then just burnish it up and then I just angle it so it starts to go down and then I can just press it down with my tape and then sometimes you get like a rough edge from the paper right here so I like to take my burnishing tool and just push on it and it kind of flattens it down so it's not so sticking up so much And just push these sides down. And just the same thing again. 
just like that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start getting these pieces here to bend nice. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going up against the chipboard just to get the paper to stick nice. And this is how I do mine. So. so you're just creasing that down so the tape is sticking to the paper. So now what I like to do is just kind of fold them up a little bit to crease it. So then this is what I like to do. So I'll just stand up my book like this and then this and the one inch chipboard, I'll take the paper and I'll pinch it up against it and just slowly walk my hands down it to, to get it to crease. And then I'll do the same thing against now the back piece. So I'm just pushing it and then the same thing with the front. And then I'll do the same thing with this side. There. And then it kind of creases up nice. So see what I said now? So when we lined everything up in the beginning, the mark for this, the overlapping paper, you can see right here, but if you flip over the book, it, they actually line right up in both spots. So it's like right here and right here. So it just kind of makes it look nice and even. So just like that. So now the next thing I want to do, because this is a folio, I want to cover paper on the inside of this. So I'm going to have to cut some. So seeing how it's eight inches and I have the one inch overlap, I'm going to cut my paper at seven and a half. So I'm going to cut two pieces of the eight and a half by 11 at seven and a half. And if you're wondering, I have the Caterpillar Pro. Um, I love it. That's what I'm cutting my paper on. So now what I want to do is I want to basically, I'm going to attach it here and here. So let's see how much space I have. So not a lot. So I'm actually just going to use quarter inch tape to put the two pieces together. because I don't really want to attach three pieces. So just like the big one, same thing. Pinch it and then walk it up. You can see the tape because it's shiny. So just like that. So let's see what we are for size. So we are only about an eighth of an inch. There we go. All right, so if I want to, this part here is going to be covered over with paper anyway. So you're not going to see it. Let's double check. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
because what I want to do is my seams, I want to line up the seam of this with the seam of this. Again, so it doesn't look all wonky from the lines. So, and it's only, it's going to leave me a small little gap right here. So I'm okay with that because it's going to get covered over anyway. So now we're going to cover this piece fully with score tape. I can break out a new one. So this is a two and a half inch tape. So let's go ahead and cover it. I don't know if any of you have ever worked with the six inch tape, but it does get to be quite the handful getting it lined up. Now you could probably get away with making sure like you wouldn't have to use full full tape coverage. As long as you taped everywhere if there's a connection point. So if you put tape here, tape here, and here, everywhere the chipboard separates, you could get away with that too. So looks like I can do it. But seeing how I just got all this tape right now, I don't have to be quite so stingy. Although I think when I made the fairy dust folio, the original, I did kind of do that. Also too, just because I wasn't sure how great it was going to come out and I love it. All right. So now let's get this piece on. Oops. Actually, will I, how do I line up? Not as much. All right. I'm just looking to see what I had for spacing. So I'm going to line it up. And that's where it's going to go. Okay. So let's do that. down my score tape. Okay. Oops. It just pulled it over on itself. So let's go ahead and get that down. So you just want to make sure no tape is overhanging. If it is, just smush it down. And you know what? The only thing I don't like is that seems to be sticking up. Let's just get that down. Just don't want no lumpy bumpies. All right, so let's go ahead. And line it up. So I'm just going to eyeball this to, for the top and the bottom. Make sure everything lines up nice and neat. And then I'm just going to go ahead and crease in between my chipboards. And I'm basically doing the same thing I did when I did the cover, just burnishing it all down. And then again, just like I did before, 
and do everything the same way. So now that I'm going to go ahead and just like the other way, now I'm going to just make sure I'm creasing the insides. And I will say you have to be careful because the paper is smooth and I can't tell you how many times I've gone like this. My hand has slipped and I've taken my fingernails and just dug into it. Luckily, it always gets covered over with paper, so. But that has happened. All right, so there we go. There's that. Super cute. All right, so I'm going to take a quick little break. You're not going to have a break. Um, I'm going to cut some paper for the next page and cool off my craft room because it is melt. I am melting in here right now. And I'll be back in a second with everything pre-cut and ready to start doing our pages. See you in a second. Okay, so now let's get started with our first page in the book, and I am calling this the Page of Pockets. So this is what we're going to work on, these little flaps, and then these little pocket flaps, and then the pocket on the bottom. Now trust me, this looks like a lot, but it is probably going to be so easy that you'll be like, what? Okay. So let's get started with that. So I've already pre-cut my pieces and we are going to be doing this side right here. So let's get started. So let me just flip over to something real quick. I wrote out my measurements. So Alrighty, so what you are going to have to start with is you need four pieces that um, I'm calling it A, so it's going to be four pieces that are six by three and a half, and you are going to take that and you're going to score on the half inch line. Then you're also going to need four pieces that are three by four and a half. You're going to score on the three inch side. So you're going to put it in your scoreboard on the three inch side like here. So you see the three is right here and you're just going to score half inch. You're going to rotate it and you're going to score at a half inch and you're going to score at four inches. So we are making a pocket and let me just do these real quick. On the six inch side, you are going to, uh, six, yeah, six inch side, you're going to score at a half inch. All right. So this piece is piece A, and this piece is going to be piece B. Okay. So now we are making pockets. So I've already taped my, all mine up. So we are going to miter the corners, and you are just cutting at the intersection where the X is. And you're going to fold it over. And then you want to burnish it all really well. Okay. And you are going to take your piece. Now, where you have the score line on here, you can see this. Oh, I'm out of light. You can see the score line is right there. You're going to place your pocket with the open end facing the top part here. So it's going to be like this. And then when you set it down, you want it probably about an eighth of an inch from the score line at the bottom here. Okay. So, and then you're going to attach it. So I always hold mine down, flip open my little flap, make sure no tape overhang and do that. And then the rest is easy. So I just pull the tape off. And then just gently bring it over and press it down. So again, this is where your opening is. All right. And then I am going to take my half inch corner rounder and I am just going to get the edges just like that. And then just fold this flap down. So you have like this. So on this, you want to make four of these little pocket flaps. All right. So you can go ahead and pause if you want, or just continue watching, but you need to make four of these. 
All right. So those are the first ones that you're going to actually attach to the book. So let's do that first. So you're going to, I just eyeball. I'm not really going for lining up stuff super perfect. But now you're going to take and you're going to fold over your flaps. And you're going to, again, just like on your pocket, you want to be about an eighth or an inch away from where your book folds. Okay? So you can see where it's folding. This is the chipboard piece, this side. So it's going to be from the first piece of chipboard. You want to be over probably about an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to line it up probably, I'm going to say that's probably a half inch from the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, it's about a half an inch. I'm just eyeballing it, but if you want a precise measurement, half inch from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead. Same thing that I've done. I'm going to hold it down and just flip my flap over. Take off my tape. Make sure there's no overhang. Holding it all down and tucking it under and then just pressing it down. So now it flaps like this. Now for the opposite side, I want to make sure that they line up even. So I'm going to line it up with this with the bottom pocket. So I'm going to make sure the top of this here is at the top of this here and then the bottom to the bottom. Okay. And I'm also again just eyeballing. And it's also one way to make sure everything's straight because obviously your paper is straight. So if you line it up straight on it, it'll line up straight across. So again, I'm going to go to the edge probably a quarter inch. I'm going to go a little further um, in than I did over here. So probably about a quarter inch from the edge here is where I'm going to attach my flap. So I'm going to hold it down and I'm untucking. I'm going to take my tape off. No overhang and I slipped. Okay. And now I'm just going to tuck it back down and just like that. All right, so now we have this and this. Okay, so now we're going to do the top pieces and we're going to do them the same way and probably a half inch or so down from the top. So I'm about there. So I don't want the, the top and the bottoms to, you know, run into each other. So I do want a space here. So probably about there. And I'm going to go ahead and attach just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this side. And as I'm lining it up from top to bottom on the bottom pocket, I'm also making sure that my sides here are lining up. So just like that, holding it down. and then just going to tuck it under just like that. So now you have all your flaps just like that. Cool. All right. So now while this is open, um, what are we going to do next? Um, we need to do actually, all right. So we need to do, hold on one second. I just need to renumber something. I wrote my notes down as I go, so I'm just trying to make sure I make any adjustments that I need to. Oops. Give me one second. Okay, all fixed. All right, so now we are going to work on our belly band flaps. And 
get back to my camera. Okay, so on this one here, the belly band flaps are going to be your C piece, and you're going to need two of them, and you're going to cut them at three and a half by six and a half, and scoring on the six and a half inch side at a half inch, you're going to do two of those. And I already rounded my corners, so I'm going to go ahead and fold my flaps down because now we want to stick them down and this is what's going to hold everything together in your book. So now I want to make sure that I'm going to be centered. So I'm going to get my centering ruler and I'm going to center it and it appears that on my centering three and a quarter is going to be my center. So actually if my three and a half there we go. So I'm measuring the center of my chipboard here. Um, and actually I don't want to do that because I didn't put them in the exact spot. So what I say three and a quarter. All right. So approximately three and a quarter. So I'm just going to drop it down. All right. So right there, I know I'm centered between the edges of these two sides of the pockets, that is. So I'm right now in the center of these two pockets here. So I'm going to start with my first one. And these are three and a half inches. So it's going to be one and three quarters on each side to find my center. So all I got to do, I'm lining everything up with my ruler here to the center point. So once I find that which I know right there is my center. So I'm going to hold it down. I don't need my ruler now because I found my center. I'm going to take the tape off. There we go. So there we go. So now this on the bottom is centered. So now we don't need the ruler anymore because of, I'm going to turn this around. So because all of our papers are all, you know, straight edges, so I'm, same thing when I did my pockets, I'm going to just line this up on the top and I'm going to bring it all the way to the edge down here. And I'm just going to attach this one the same way. All right, so let me flip it back around. So now we have this. All right, so now what you want to do, so this is piece D. This is what I'm calling the belly band pocket for the bottom. So this piece here is going to be four and a half by two. You're going to score on the four and a half inch side at a half inch and a half inch. So that'll be 0.5 and at four point. And then on the bottom, you're going to score at a half inch on the bottom. So on the two inch side, half inch, and you're going to miter those. And then this, we're just going to go ahead, same thing as always on a pocket. Now this is on the bottom of the belly band. This is going to keep your tags from falling through. So this is really the only purpose of this pocket for the most part. So again, eighth of an inch from the bottom. So line everything up. I'm going to go ahead, just like that. All right, so that goes down there. So now you need a little, now this is, I'm calling this little piece the baby belly band for the belly band. So this is going to go on here. So this piece here is one inch by four and five eighths. So notice that it is four and five eighths for the measurement and a half inch on each end. So it'll be at 0.5 and at uh, four points four and one eighth. Okay. So now on this, I have my tape on. You're going to actually tuck these in so you don't see the tape just like that. And this is going to go on your pocket. You're going to wrap it just like this and it's going to attach at the bottom. All right. And I don't remember how far down that went. So let's see. So three and a quarter inches. So I'm going to touch it, so three and a quarter inches down. So I'm going to stick my ruler on the top. And I'm just going to 
just need an approximate. It's nothing, no science. So I'm going to hold it, holding one side, and I'm just going to bring it up. I'm holding down on my paper. So take my tape off. And my tape off. So just like that. So now this comes down like this. And when it all tucks together, it will just go like that. It keeps everything in place. So now one last piece. This looks like a lot, but this is actually super easy to do. So taking my belly bands, opening those up. I'm going to put a pocket on the bottom. So your large bottom pocket piece. Um, this is number F. And this is going to be, you're going to cut one at seven and a quarter by three and a half. On the seven and a quarter inch side, half inch each end. And on the three and a half inch, you're going to score at a half inch. Now let me just double check real quick. Yeah, three and a half. So it's going to be a three inch pocket. So again, miter. Of all my scraps. So go ahead and fold your pieces like so. Alrighty. And then this one here, you're just going to line it up between the two pieces. I'm just eyeballing it in the middle. And I am going to bring it down just a tad. So I'm probably maybe a quarter inch. I'm line, actually lining it up with my bottom paper, but it doesn't matter. So anyway, I'm just centering it between these two pieces here and a little bit from the bottom because I don't want the bottom fold to catch it. So just go ahead and set it down a little bit. And I think I might have slipped. Hold on. Sometimes when you hold it, the tape gets slippery, so. And I'm just going to do this. Fold it over. There you go, just like that. So then all your pockets just fold over, your belly band up and down. And then till it's decorated, I want to keep it closed, so I just cut some plain black photo mats. And just like that, keeps everything all closed in place. Alrighty, so we will be back in a second and we will start our waterfall section. Alright, be right back in a minute guys. All right, guys, so let's get started. We are going to work on this waterfall page right here. And if hopefully you thought this side was easy because this one, I promise, is going to be even easier. All right, so let's get started on that one. So for that one now, you are going to need to cut piece G which is going to be seven pieces and you're going to cut them at six and a quarter by four and three quarters and you are going to score on the four and three quarter inch mark at a half inch and you're going to fold them all over and burnish them. I've already done that. So that's what you want to do to those. Okay. So we are going to start on the center page here. So on this page here, you do actually have to put pattern paper down before you start this. So I had cut my piece. So this center piece here is seven by eight. So rule of thumb when you're mounting is you're going to come in a quarter inch. So I cut it at six and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And I went ahead and I chose this pattern here because most of it you're not even going to see. It's going to be covered up. You're only probably going to see very little of the edge. So I didn't want to waste anything too special because it was just going to get covered anyway. So I went with something very basic and simple because it's just a background paper. All right. And then I did go ahead and ink my edges with Distress Ink Black Soot. And that's what I'm going to use for all of them. And then I added score tape to my edges. So my little trick, just like everything else, 
how I set things up is I'm going to line up where I want my pattern paper, put that down, hold it, and I'm going to remove one side, put that down, and then now I'm just going to remove the tape from my other sides. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick it down, just like that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is now we're going to add our waterfall pages. And these are super easy. So let me just look. All right. So for the first one, I'm probably going to come up oh, approximately a half inch, maybe, from the bottom. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to make sure that I am pretty centered with my pattern paper. So as you can see, not a whole lot of paper is going to be showing here. So we're going to come up just a tad. So real easy to create the waterfalls is so you lay down your first piece and I'm going to go ahead, remove my tape. and put it down. So that is going to be the base start for the waterfall. And now I'm just going to continue. So what I'm doing is I am taking the part here that you score over and I'm basically going to attach it like snug up against the top of the other piece. So you can see I'm just going to set it like this. Okay. And it will find its own, own, you know, like when you slide it, it'll catch anyway. So more importantly is I'm going to make sure that my sides are all lined up, both sides here. If you scored uneven at all, you can always cover it with pattern paper on the inside afterwards. So I'm going to make sure I'm lined up. And then again, this is how I like to put things down. So I'm holding it here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So now, just like that. So now I'm going to continue doing the exact same thing with every piece, making sure I'm also, as I put it down, I'm making sure I'm lined up from my top card stock is lined up to my bottom card stock. And I'm also eyeballing to make sure that I'm staying the same distance on each side right there and there. So. Just like that. Looks good. Like that. Again, no tape overhang. Okay, and we're almost done. See, I told you this page was going to be super easy. And the last piece. So the last piece it will bring you so if you lined it up right you're pretty much going to see that you are even on all sides top and bottom and I just eyeballed it so not too shabby huh there you go and that's it for the waterfall super easy so as you see you just flip up just like that like that. Voila. And as far as the magnetic closure, I will do that as I'm decorating. Um, but basically all I'm going to do is tape some ribbon down here and then I will take a card, a, you know, like a pretty card. So let me show you. 
So this is the waterfall. So I just used a pocket card and I put it on the bottom. If you want, you could always add another pocket, a little shallow pocket down here, um, whatever you want. But I just taped my ribbon underneath my pattern paper and I have a little magnet hiding under here as well as oops, underneath the paper right here. So it just finds its spot. And I don't know what I'm going to use for the top, but like how I worked this one, that's the two little fairies on the magnet part here. And I lined it up so they would just kind of like be sitting here in between. I don't know how well you can see it. So you can kind of see that. Let me zoom in. And bear with me because we know we're going to go blurry. Alright, so as you can see on here, you can see the people sitting. So you can see the little kids sitting right there. And then I made sure when I did the magnet, like there's, they look like they're part of the picture there. So I don't want to go ahead and add my ribbon and my magnetic closure just yet, only because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for a paper up there. So I will show you when I come back and do a final review on the whole thing. But anyway, that one was easy. That's the waterfall page. All right, and I'll be back in a minute and we will start on the third page. All right, I'll see you in a second, guys. Alrighty guys, so let's get started on page three. So page three is going to be this page over here. So what this has is just some flaps, basically. And let's see. Nope. Alright, so this page here basically just has some flaps and we are working off of this side. So this side is the um, back page, or not the back side, I'm sorry, like the third, the, yeah, third page. So this one is basically going to be some flaps. All right, so let's get started on that one. So if you open up your book, it's this side right here we're going to work on, and I'm just calling this page three because there's nothing like too fancy. I mean, might be like flaps or something, but anyway, we are going to start here. So what you need first is, so page three, piece H, this is going to be the left flap. And this is going to, you're going to cut one at eight and a half by seven and a half. And on the eight and a half inch side, you're going to score at two and three quarters, which is going to give you your first flap. And then you're going to score all the way over at the eight, which is going to give you your little binding flap. And you're just going to add tape to this piece right here. All right. So now what you want to do with this one here is, so how I always do my stuff. Now this one is cut a little short and you're going to eyeball it from the top to the bottom. So what you're going to do is, again, about an eighth of an inch away from your, um, your spine, um, the centerpiece there. So you fold it up. It's on an eighth of an inch away from the side of your chipboard here that goes into this piece. So you're going to, what I'm doing is I fold it under and I am going to put it about an eighth of an inch away, making sure that I am all lined up. So I'm making sure that I'm even from the top to the bottom. So once I know I'm in my spot, I'm going to untuck, take my tape off. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. And now this piece here. So basically now you'd have like a bigger piece and it's going to overlap. So on your two and three quarter inch, you're going to fold it over. And again, and then you can just go ahead and burnish it just like that. So now open up the flap right here. So on this piece here, I have a little pocket down on the bottom. So that is going to be your eye piece. And your eye piece is, you're going to cut one piece six and one eighth by three and a half. And you're going to score on the six and one eighth inch side at a half inch and at five and five eighths. And then you're going to score on the three and a half inch side at a half inch. 
and you are going to go ahead and miter your corners. And then go ahead and burnish. I tell you, doing this tutorial has literally been an all day thing because of video processing and all that other stuff. It is taking all day to do something that should not take that long. Wish it was easier. All right, so anyway, so on the flap that you just attached, you're going to open it up and the little flip flap here is going to go over. You're going to center this. Now you're not gonna have more than probably about a 16th inch on each side. So you're gonna go ahead and attach your pocket. And there you go. So just to show you on the original, because with all the photo, with the uh, flaps and stuff that I added, it does look a little different, but it's really, it's not. It is all the same. So this piece right here is literally this little flap, which is right here, and then the pocket. And that's all that is. And then I just had the cards and stuff the way I attached them, because I only glued like right here and here. And then I put the one on top and did the same thing. So I made, I left the top unglued so you could do that. So it looks like more than it really is, but literally that's all that is. So super easy. So now we are going to work on the other flap. So for this flap, this is going to be the right side flap piece J and you're going to score this seven and a half by seven and a half. You're going to score on the seven and a half inch side at a half inch. And then again, you're going to score at five inches. All right. So just like this side here. So you can close this down because you want to make sure that this is going to line up. So go ahead and fold that over and burnish it. And what you're going to do here now, just like everything else, I like to make sure everything is squared up. So I'm going to line up the, the cut edges because this is the same size. So I'm going to line everything up so it's matching from top to bottom on this other piece here. So I'm going to go probably, let's see, I'm going to go pretty close. So I'm probably about a quarter inch away from the edge of my cover. So again, I'm going to make sure everything is lined up perfect, just like so. Now I'm going to hold it down on top of my flap and go ahead and stick it down just like that so then now I have this piece here and this is where I have the score line for the five inch when I did it so go ahead and fold that over and then this goes just like this so this is where we are right now so now we are going to cut piece K, which is going to be a side pocket. So this is going on the side versus on the bottom. So this piece right here, the side pocket is four by eight and a half. And you're going to score on the four inch side at a half inch and on the eight and a half inch side at half inch and at eight inches. Go ahead and miter your corners. And go ahead and fold just like so. Burnish. And this piece here, you're going to untuck your flap, which is now going to become the top for your envelope because it's basically an envelope piece. And again, about an eighth of an inch away from your score line for the flap. And make sure you line it all up. And then you're going to go ahead and stick it down. And then this just folds over like that. And that piece there is this piece right here. 
So that's what this is. Now I did use a fancy die on the edge die from Claire Elise, but I know not everybody might have those. So I just made a standard pocket. But if you do have it, I go ahead and encourage you to make a nice, pretty, fancy edge on something like that. Because it does add to it a lot. Um, I just love the um, the Claire Elise dies. They're awesome. So, And then I did use a magnetic closure on the flap, which I will do when I'm decorating. So it just comes over like that. So now the only thing left is, whoops, is the little shallow pocket right here. So let's go ahead and do that piece. And that piece is going to be one and three quarters by eight and a half. And score on the eight and a half inch side at half inch and at eight inches. And on the one and three quarter inch side, go ahead and score at a half inch. So this is just going to give you a one and a quarter inch pocket. So go ahead and miter your corners. And go ahead and tuck everything in. And burnish it all down. So now this, again, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Make that easier. So again, I'm lining everything up, making sure it's all squared off. And on these pieces here that are shorter, sometimes it is harder for me to pull the tape off. Oops, let's see, my paper frayed. So, line it up again. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull that off, just like that. And then these pieces here, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and push this down. So you can see right here that this is sticking up just like that. So that's why I put the chipboard on it. And then it just folds over like this. And then you can see, you can see like how it's sticking up a little. So I did cut a piece of um, chipboard one inch by, I think it was the full length. So seven and a half. And I stuck it on and I added the pattern paper to it. So that was this piece right here. Alrighty, so we will come back and we will work on the last page in a second. All right, I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty guys, so let's wrap this up on the construction part. So now the only spot we have left, which is even easiest one of all, is this page here. So this literally consists of a pocket on the bottom, a flap on the top, and this little side corner belly man. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to do that. Oops. This is this page. Now we're closing it over. So to start, you're going to cut piece M, which is a piece that is six by six and a quarter, and you're going to score on the six and a quarter at a half inch. Apply the tape and fold it over. And this one is super simple. So I'm going to turn my book and I'm going to center it, leaving about an eighth of an inch from the top. So I'm going to go ahead and center that down. And again, the way I do them all, just like this. And go ahead and push that down there. Now, if it would be easier, I don't think it's going to be though. It's going to say you could open the book up, but. Oh, I guess it is. It'll work deep like that. All right. So then now we are going to take our pocket piece, which is piece N. And this is, you're going to cut one piece at seven by four, score on the seven inch side at a half inch and at six and a half. And on the four inch side, you're going to score at a half inch. And this is a pocket. So we are going to miter those corners. Easy, and then we are going to oops, just going to fold them like so. Oops. 
And then on this too, we want to make sure we are lined up. So again, I'm going to just stick it underneath my flap to make sure my cut edges are all lined up. And I'm going to eyeball it from the bottom to the sides, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that up. And then we're going to seal it down. And just like that. And that's that piece right there. So now I did do that little corner belly band piece that you saw. So the, only, the way I'm going to do that is it's going to be super easy. So did I do it from the corner? Yes. So I literally stuck my belly band piece. So this is just a strip. Um, I wrote down one by eight, but you can use any scrap piece. This I think is one by seven maybe or six and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strip and the corner of my pocket right here, I'm going to take and lay this piece right down and I'm going to line it up and go ahead and burnish here and here. So I have my little creases just like that. Okay. And let me come back in one second because I think my computer is heating up on me. Hold on. Okay, so my computer was heating up and I did watch the video. It's a little choppy, but um, it's just tiling and stuff. So anyway, let's continue real quick so I can get this computer to cool down. So like I said, a strip that is one inch um, by eight I have on the um, cutting guide, but it doesn't matter. You just use a scrap piece. So what I'm doing is this is the corner of my pocket right here. Um, let's see if I can give you some contrast. So like right there. So I have that and it looks like I'm focusing. All right. So right here, the corner here, I'm going to stick this here and then just wherever this falls, it falls. So I want to find my spots. So let's see if I can zoom in. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up here and then I'm just going to burnish the edge a little here and a little right here. And then the spots that I burnished, you can kind of see them like that. So I'm just want to fold them over and then fold this piece over like that. And then I'm just going to burnish it down. So then now I'm going to, again, I'm going to line it up, making sure. So this piece at the top here is the only piece that you have to watch out for because it's going to overhang. And basically, if you just cut from this corner to this corner, it's going to square it off. So I'm just going to literally cut it just like that. And then it will line up nice and even like that and that. So now just unfold them and I'm just going to apply some score tape to them and I don't need that there now. So let's see. Just going to do it like that. And I'm going to trim it up. And it sounds like it is pouring rain again. We've had a week of nonstop rain here. And now I'm just going to do the same thing over here. Let's see. On the right side. So take there. Where's my thing? Just like that. So now I'm going to fold my pieces over so I know where I have them and this piece is going to go right here and this piece down here so just going to hold it flip it over and then flip it back and make sure I'm squared off stick it down there and then just remove the tape here And go ahead and stick it down. All right, and that is it for the back flap. Just like that. So then what I did was when I wanted to do the little corner angle, so all I do is just line up 
about an eighth of an inch away from the belly band part here. And then I just take my bone folder and I just go ahead and fold it up a little bit. So you can see where it makes the crease right there. And let me just go ahead and I'm just going to burnish it down just like that. So now I made that cute little flap right there. And then that way when you go to put your cards and stuff in, oops, that'll be attached. So it'll hold everything closed nice and tight. Alrighty, so I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to decorate my album and I will come back with a final review video on this album once I get it fully decorated. But I did want to go ahead and get the tutorial out. So if you wanted to start, you basically have everything ready to go. If you do need any guide on as how I decorated it, you can check out the Fairy Dust album that I have out there. And anyway, if you like what you see, I would love a thumbs up. Any feedback would be great. Leave me a comment down below. I'd love it if you subscribe. And if you like this tutorial, um, hopefully I'll come back and I'll start doing some more on a somewhat regular basis as I get time. All right. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye.